Columbia, but I went to a college in Miami. I got, I got to Miami. I, I went to college in Los Angeles and I moved to Miami because I got accepted at the University of Miami. And then I started going there in 1988. But in 1989, a friend of mine, somebody I knew, and I never heard from her again, ever. But I, I will thank her forever for taking me to High Vong. But one day I met this, I met this uh, girl and she, um, she said, let's go have dinner and I'll take you to a place uh, that um, it's unusual. It's not like any other restaurant, but it, the food is to die for. And I said, sure, you know, I'm open to all kinds of food because I, I love to go to restaurants and stuff like that. So she took me to this place um, on Calle Ocho, which I knew very well because I used to live in Key Biscayne, it's, which is very close by. So um, I went there and we sat there and she said, you have to have the spring rolls. And they, they bring the spring rolls. I didn't, I didn't know who Kathy was. I didn't know anything. I just went there because they took me. But once I took a bite of the, my first spring roll, I was in love. I was in love. I was hooked. I mean, forever. I went to college. I had graduated. I moved back to Columbia in, uh, 2000, in 1995. Moved back. And every time I go to Miami or to Florida, I always, always have to go to High Vong at least two or three times before I come back to Colombia. I never had uh, Vietnamese food before ever in my life. Um, and I've had it in other restaurants after they close the restaurant. And I never, I, I'm like, every time I, I try, like they say spring rolls on the menu or whatever, every time I try that, I say, no. Nobody makes them like like uh, they make my Hag Wong. It's just unbelievable. I always went with my friend who lives in Fort Lauderdale. And um, we always went together, always, because we loved it. But every time we went, every time Kathy saw us, she panicked. She panicked because she knew we were going to order like five or six orders of spring rolls, five of, or six orders of pork rolling cakes. They, they're hard to make and they made only so many for all the people because everybody wanted to eat that she sometimes she, she would just say you know only two orders per person tonight and then we were like oh, no i came all the way to, from colombia to eat here and i can only eat two two orders but you know we ate like the two orders or whatever and then we came back you know every chance we got we just we just got back there and, and enjoyed that food it's just delicious what the restaurant had was very special because people would talk to each other. Like you wouldn't know the person sitting next to you and that person would talk to you and, and make a comment about the food or something. And, uh, and one thing that really stood out all, all through these years was that everybody felt exactly the same way you felt about the food. That was like, I've never, I've never felt that way in any restaurant. When you actually eat the food and taste it, it was exactly the same for everybody. You know, it, everybody was addicted to it. And um, some people would just go by themselves. They would bring a book and just read while they were eating. You know, it was very, very familiar. Like the, the whole place was cozy and, and like you felt like you were in, you know, in your dining room you know, at home or something. Every time I spoke to somebody and every time it was always strangers, but the, what they, what came out of their mouths as an experience, as how they felt the food was exactly how I felt. So I said, how can, how can they just make everybody feel exactly the same way? You know, because you go to a restaurant, you order fried chicken and uh, maybe somebody likes it, maybe somebody doesn't, you know, everybody has a different experience. But uh, at Hai Vong, everybody felt the same way. The food makes you, makes you friendly. Once I walked into the restaurant, I became a friendly person, <laughs> you know, open to talking to anybody who would want to talk to us. And um, that, that's, that's something that also that restaurant had, you know, it had a a certain magic to it that made you change your mood, change your, so once I waited two hours for a table, two hours for a table, 
you have to love it. You have to love it. I don't even wait. I don't even wait half an hour for a doctor's appointment. I closed the restaurant. I was like depressed. I could not believe it. I could not believe it. I said, why? Why are you guys closing their restaurant? It's such a success and it's so delicious. But then of course, you know, you understand that uh, they had been working forever and they were tired. They were just ready to retire. Two years later or something like that, they started saying that they were going to write a book with the recipes. I was like, oh my God, I need to buy that book, which I did. I have it. When I bought the book, I just thought it was, you know, a recipe book, you know? But then when I started reading it and I started reading the story of their lives, I was like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. What they had to go through and how Tung got to, you know, get connected with, with Kathy. Um, I just, I just, I just found out while reading the book. It was, it was amazing. It was incredible. Now that um, I, I've read their story, I understand, you know, they, they've worked their whole lives, especially Tung. Well, Kathy too, but my God, she had such a hard, hard beginning and um, she's been working since she was eight years old. I admired her before uh, for her cooking, but now as a human being, uh, after reading her story, I, I was like, wow. And Kathy too. I mean, she just, what I admire most about Kathy is my God, she didn't have to take in the refugees and she just did it out of like a good heart. That's something that not everybody does. You know, not everybody does that. Not everybody has, everybody has a heart to welcome so many refugees um, to your own home. It's, it's, it's something that, you know, she, she had it in her. And um, I really admire that.